Hello everyone, welcome to another pick a card reading. I hope all of you are safe and feeling good. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lunarmal reader. And on this channel, we do all things Lunarmal. So I have this wonderful Lunarmal deck here. This is my own deck. I call it the Silhouettes deck. And I am gonna be using it today for our pick a card reading. So for this reading, I have in mind the key question of what we need to know right now. So some key information, some kind of insight, possibly an action uh, that we can take in to consider with everything that's going on right now. And as you can see, I've got six stones here, and so I'm going to be doing six readings. And I want to do six different readings, and I want to draw each of them separately. So I do project doing shorter readings, somewhat shorter readings, just because I want to focus on what is that key insight for you right now. So let's go over these six stones. We have the Angelite stones, this lovely baby blue. We have the Brandberg stone. It's a purplish crystal type. And we have this interesting carnelian stone. I'm always amazed at the shape of this stone. It comes in this uh, a little bit of a funny little bulge here and there. And then there's the leopard skin. It has this golden tint to it along with the black patches and the cat's eye stone. And finally the lapis stone. So spend some time to consider which of these stones you wanna zoom in on for your reading. I'll pause the video so that you can concentrate a little bit on this. And then if you want to pause it further, then feel free to do so. When you're ready, head over to your timestamp and you can click on the reading over there and I'll see you in that reading. All right, Angelite group, welcome to your reading. I've got your stone here nearby and I've got my deck. It is shuffled as always. I always shuffle uh, more intensely between readings and I just like to shuffle a little bit longer just to concentrate on that intention for you. So again, we are looking at what you need to know right now. And for you, Angelite group, I want to do a simple six card reading. And for this one, I like to deal the cards. All right, an interesting set of cards, Angelite group. We've got a very beautiful card that shows up right in the middle of the bottom line, and that is the star. The star is an all around wish fulfillment card. And then we have a couple of challenging cards here. We have the mouse and the cross. So I think the key insight is gonna come from this. I know uh, you, maybe you're wondering why it's the negative cards, why are you focusing on this? But actually uh, the cross has that spiritual element to it and it has to do with important decisions. And the mouse can also warn you about details or, or certain intentions, uh, possibly a certain speed bump. So before we get to them, let's start weaving the cards in the left to right manner that is the typical one we follow and also the different lines so that we can weave all this together. The top line has to do with family. Why? Because we have the house in the middle. The house tends to be associated with home and family or possibly the closer relationships to you. And the garden here can point to just a further indication of the house, but it also has to do with gatherings and meetings. So there could be some kind of gathering and meeting happening for you on the home front. Maybe you're having people over, maybe you're going to visit some people. And the mouse here warns you about someone's intentions. So someone could be causing some problems. Uh, they could be possibly gossiping. Um, they could also be feeling nervous and causing anxiety a little bit around them. The key with the mouse is that you need to be aware of their intentions and you need to be aware that they don't necessarily have um, your best interest at heart or maybe other people's interest at heart as well. They could be a bit of a troublemaker, you know, a bit of a, a, an energy vampire, the type of person who sort of creates a bad mood a little bit. You know, they, they carry around a, some kind of a, a gray cloud with them and so they could sort of mess up the atmosphere here a little bit so this is something that you need to be aware of now something interesting about the mouse is that even though it's negative it is not particularly strong so it doesn't have to be something too dramatic it could just be something a little bit annoying and i'm not seeing any reactive cards i'm not seeing cards that tell us that you need to do something about this such as 
uh, setting healthy boundaries or telling them to chill or telling them anything actually it seems to be just something that you need to be aware of now before we continue though to qualify the mouse a little bit more i just want to backtrack to this line and suggest that the garden and house can also refer to your workplace or any other kind of group that you are part of so in the context of work there could be some issues going on um, there could be some tension going on between people and colleagues and possibly also things going on behind the scenes. This can also point to gossip in the context of work. And the idea here is that you want to be aware of it, but not necessarily participate in it. So just be aware that something off is going on and try not to get involved with it because you don't have to. And let's look at this bottom line now to see the positive messages coming through the star. So the bottom line is letter, star and cross. The star is an all-around wish fulfillment card. So with, this, with the letter, you can look forward to some wonderful news. Now, the cross in this context can go somewhat both ways, but I'm inclined to think of it as more positive in this line. But let's see when we complete the picture, when we look at this pair together. The cross has to do with important decisions, matters of destiny, um, deep lessons that are learned, you know, it tends to be a deeper card, a bit of a heavier card in general. With the star, though, I think it has to do with having good faith in yourself, trusting life, trusting your good, and also being grateful for it. And it also has to do with forgiveness because the star is a card of healing and the cross is about lessons and challenges. So together, they have a, a deeper spiritual energy here that points to forgiveness and the idea of releasing. So even though there are some challenges here or maybe someone is messing up with you with others i think the central line uh, sorry the bottom line suggests that you can let this go and you don't have to get involved with it you don't have to feel like you need to do anything about it. you can just really let it go and the letter can also bring up another piece of news that you've been wanting to hear. So like I said, the star has to do with wish fulfillment and it seems that now you get the news. So this is something that's gonna come through and that is really important for you to know about. The thing about the cross is that you want to weigh it carefully because it's possible from the mouse and cross that it's not everything that it seems. So I think that's another key takeaway take from these six cards that I think is really helpful in this context. Let's continue weaving the cards. The garden and letter, definitely this has to do with news arriving. It can also point to something of an announcement because the garden has to do with community, the public, it's a bit broader in scope than one-on-one -on -one relationships. And so with the letter, it can point to some kind of announcement. It can also suggest that you run some administration or perhaps that you're publicizing something that you need to communicate or get in touch with others and network and things like that. If that's what you're looking at, definitely it's a good time for relationships. The garden and house are both really good for that and the letter furthers that. It's just that the mouse warns you that, you know, when you put yourself out there, when you're reaching out, just expect that not everything you hear back is going to be what you want. So just keep that in mind. The house and star is a very positive combination. It has to do with a wish materializing. With the house, it can be a domestic wish materializing. It can also point to the job, like we said, in which case things go really well. Uh, you could get the news that you were wanting. Maybe that's a promotion. Maybe that's a new job, a new role, or something really positive happening for you. And of course, it also applies if you run your own business. The mouse and cross is the more challenging combination here, and it has to do with a bit of a burden that you carry and that you probably will have to let go of. And I say that because of the star, because the star is the healing card and healing has to do with release and letting go of anything negative, the negative energy. That's actually what forgiveness means. The mouse and cross can also point to a difficult decision or a person that you need to assess, um, a circumstance that you need to assess, a situation that you need to be aware of. And the key here is to get into the details. The mouse is a card of details that has to do with the smaller things, the finer things that we might overlook. And so the cross really asks you to pay attention to this because the details matter for your decision. Now the garden star and mouse is a lovely combination. It tells me that again, wish fulfillment, but also healing the idea of forgiveness, the idea of 
overcoming whatever, um, com whatever issue can be brought up by the mouse here. And also, I think it, it has to do with seeing them as smaller than it actually is. So another key message that I think is coming through here is that maybe issues are not as big as you think they are. And I think this kind of perspective is really valuable. So this is another key thing that you need to be aware of. The letter house and cross is also, I think, a positive combination because the cross and house often has to do with finding the ideal home, the destined space, the destined place. And with the letter, you could receive news about that. So you could land on that right place, that right atmosphere, that right situation. So how would we put all of these cards together? They're really interesting. They're a really interesting set of cards. I would say Angelite group that first you need to know that what you desire is on its way. But also what you desire is something that you need to look into a bit more deeply because the details carry more relevant information for you. So I want you to focus on the details as well. Not just take the positive news, the happy announcement or whatever is this piece of information that comes through. Don't just take it at face value, even though it looks like the thing that you were after. I really want you to look into the details and to double check everything. Okay. Another key thing is that you want to weigh your decisions carefully and that it's in the details. I want you to look into the details. And then when it comes to people um, or certain environments or, you know, that kind of energy that comes with an atmosphere or a group, I want you to be aware that not everyone is honest or straightforward. And you want to keep in mind that different people have different agendas. What that does is that it helps you manage your expectations and also to sort of, you know, keep yourself to yourself a little bit more carefully, guarding yourself, not trusting everyone too easily. And that's not a bad thing, really. That's just being balanced where you don't, you know, where you assess people and you just make sure they align with you before you invest yourself in them. There could be things going on behind the scenes. Again, the idea of detail uh, comes into the picture, but I also want to suggest that you don't gossip, that you don't take part in these things. You know, just be observant and see what you can learn from this because things are materializing in a really positive way for you. So all in all, Angelite group, I would say that if you have doubts, if you're feeling suspicious about things, yes, there could be a few challenges that you're working through, but actually quite a bit of good is unfolding for you. So I want you to be more patient about this. I want you to be more observant about what's going on around you. And I want you to trust and have faith in yourself that your good is coming if you are willing to receive it. Forgiveness is a very helpful thing to do. It doesn't mean condoning other people's poor behaviors. It means that you release yourself from negative energy, that you release expectations, and you just pull your power back into yourself and have faith in your good. So I think these are some pretty good cards, Angelite. Uh, group. It has to do, I think there's a lot of grounded energy through them, probably because of the house, which is really solid, and the mouse and cross that bring so much awareness. But there's also a lot of wonderful faith and spiritual cards coming through. So I do think you're you're managing these inner and outer energies and the interplay between the two. And I think this dynamic can really help you find your path or your next best step and so I really want you to know that this good is coming to you. So let me know how you like this reading, Angelite. It's pretty spiritual in my opinion. I'm looking forward to your thoughts. Leave me your comments. I'm looking forward to reading them. And until we meet again, take very good care of yourself. And thank you so much for watching. Welcome, Brandbird Group. Here we are with your reading. And I've got my deck shuffled and your stone sitting nearby. And for your reading, Brandberg, I want to do a simple line of seven. Of course, my deck is shuffled between readings and I just like to tinker a little bit with the shuffling before starting so I can seal the intention. I like to fan the deck and draw the cards for a line of seven. So here we go. All right, Brandberg group, here are your cards. Very interesting, some challenging cards, but remember that the question is about what you need to know. What stands out for me is the snake right in the middle of the line. The snake is a tricky card. It's one of the trickiest cards of the deck, but it has to do with silence and secrecy. And so its key message is that you need to keep it under your hat. 
what that means is that you need to keep whatever that thing is that you have in mind, you need to keep it to yourself. You need to be silent about it. This is not the time to vocalize these things, Brandberg Group. So I want you to keep in mind that some things are going on. Maybe you observe them. Maybe they're behind the scenes. And that now is not the right time to vocalize everything. So the snake really asks you to keep it to yourself and to keep that thing under your hat until a better time. That's a really important message that you need to know right now, Brandberg Group. So let's backtrack to the beginning of the line and then weave this whole thing together. We've got the clouds, lily, and house. Let's stop a little bit with the first triplet. The clouds is a challenging card. It has to do with stress, tension, confusion. It's a very psychological card, so usually when we see it, it has to do with um, mental stress or thoughts that are unclear, things that are unclear, you know, that kind of environment where there's tension. It's not so much physical, but it's really sort of in the atmosphere, if you know what I mean. And then we've got the lily and house. The lily is normally the card of career. And so with the house, it can have to do with your job, your work, or maybe your longer term career, like the bigger picture of your work and career. If we're looking at career for you, then you could be questioning your path. You could be wondering what's going on at your job, what's gonna happen with your longer term future. And so if we continue with this theme, the snake here suggests that you don't take any action just yet. Just sort of back up a little bit, move away a little bit from whatever stressful situation is. Try to see it from a different perspective and keep your thoughts to yourself. This is not a time to vocalize your issues. You want to sort of just figure things out a little bit more before you express anything. Uh, certainly the clouds is uh, being the card of confusion and with the snake, it asks you for patience. Both the lily and the house are also slower cards. They're wiser cards. They go step by step. And so the idea is don't rush, don't jump the gun. Don't try to do anything about this just yet. What's interesting is this other side of the line. We've got the key scythe and child. This is a lovely set of cards. Um, I think so because it's exciting. It tend, it's tending to a new beginning. The key is an all around success card. It has to do with solutions and the child is about beginnings and it has to do with joy. And so when we see the key and scythe together, it usually has to do with breakthroughs, flashes of insights, um, you know, solutions that are strong and that come to sort of save the day. And then the scythe and child has to do with a new beginning, um, probably a sudden one, something that comes a little bit out of the blue. So what's interesting, Brandenburg Group, is that you want to be a little bit patient. You want to take it easy, be slow. Don't vocalize your thoughts because a solution is in the making. And once that solution comes through, you're going to be able to take that step forward. Okay. So the line is very clearly calling for patience because something is in the making. You will find the solution. Once that solution comes through, then you can act and take the step. And I think this is a really important message that you want to take advantage of. Now, I suggested that this can have to do with your work and career. If that's the case, if you're thinking of making a move or making a change, you want to hang in there. Don't tell people about it until you've got that green light to go into a new beginning. So that can mean a new job or a new opportunity where you are or something that changes in a way that benefits you. The Lillian house can also have to do with your home, where you live. If you're looking at changing uh, where you live, you're looking to make a move, same idea. You want to hang on a little bit because the right solution is going to come through and you're going to get the right green light to go into that new direction, maybe a new home or maybe doing something different in your home. Uh, the Lillian house can also point to long-term investments. And I say that because the Lily is associated with retirement and the house has to do with assets as well. So in a money context, the cards are equally, uh, I mean, they follow the, the same pattern. So again, maybe you're looking to do something about uh, your long-term retirement or some bigger steps in life. But again, the snake asks you to slow down, wait, hang on, be silent about this because a solution is in the making. So I think this is a really helpful message coming through your line of seven Brandberg group. We are seeing um, that you are in a state of tension or possibly confusion about 
an area of your life, and I would say it's an important area of your life, whether it's your work, career, your home life. But the message of the cards, what you need to know right now is that don't act just yet. Solutions or better solutions are in the making and these are going to come through. You're going to know that they're right. And then once they come through, you're going to be able to take that step forward. So I think this is a lovely line, very practical. One more thing before I close is to look at these cards here in terms of relationships. The house has to do with family relationships or close relationships. And the lily is often about long-term partners, possibly parents. You know, it tends to point to wisdom and maturity. And so it usually refers to older people or committed uh, relationships, you know, that kind of thing. And so there could be a situation here in your relationships. And again, similarly, the same dynamic is playing out. You may want to do something about it, but the snake warns you against jumping the gun, against acting prematurely. You want to wait until the right solution comes through. And once it does, you will know and you will be able to take that new step. So I have to say, Brandberg, I really like to see these sorts of cards in Lenormand because they are so practical and so helpful. And you know, you see these negative cards and you're like, oh no, but then you weave the cards together and you're like, well, you know, this is actually really helpful. And it sort of brings you back to neutral, anchors you in your reason and experience, and it helps you act in constructive ways in your life. So let me know how you like this message. I'm really looking forward to your comments, your feedback. Please leave me something below. And until we meet again, I wanna say thank you so much for tuning in and take very good care of yourself. Welcome, Carnelian Group. Here we are with your reading, and we've got your lovely stone here nearby. And of course, my deck is shuffled as always. For your reading, Carnelian, I want to do an augmented line of five, and I like to deal out the cards for such a layout. Just shuffling a little bit to seal the intention. Remember, we are focusing on what you need to know right now. So let's deal your cards see what we get. All right, Carnelian Group. Wow, look at these cards. These are powerful cards, powerful cards of change. Uh, this combination here stands out. In the center of it all, we have the house. The house is about your foundations, home and family. It can also point to the job. It can refer to your team on the job. It can sort of refer to a business. Um, possibly because of the bear. The bear is a card of wealth. And so any number of these areas, or maybe all of them can figure for you. But I think what we're seeing is a broader message that has to do with a deep change. I think we should weave the lines um, and see how the whole picture builds up. We have in the central line, we have a couple of challenging cards. We have the mouse and the snake and we have the scythe. Now, the scythe can be challenging, but it also is a relieving card because it has to do with cutting, breaking through, releasing. And when we see it in light of the challenges here that we're gonna get into, it's very possible that you are releasing a negative situation. The mouse and bear, and the bear and house. I think we need to tie these three together and not so much break it up into two pairs. What's interesting is that the bear and house can point to parents. That's because the bear is associated with the mother in Le Normand and the house is associated with the father. And of course, either one can refer to either parent, but when we get them together, this theme is emphasized more. So it can be the case that we're looking at your parents, something going on with them, between them, or possibly your home base. With the mouse, there is a challenge here. And the thing about the mouse and bear figuring together is that it can cause the mouse to be a bit more serious than it normally is. So the mouse is a challenging card, but the thing about it is that it's not so much of a big deal, except if you leave it unchecked, then over time, the losses of the mouse are greater. With the bear, we see that this is what's possible. It's possible that something has been getting out of hand 
or is in process of getting out of hand. And I think this is a really helpful message, Carnelian Group, because this pair is bringing your attention to the possibility that you are leaving something unchecked. And if you leave it unchecked for much longer, it can cause a bigger problem than it needs to be. Now, when we look at the house in this context, it can point to something that has to do with home and family, or like we said, the other areas, we said work or possibly your home business. With the snake, and scythe, it's very important that you nip this in the bud. You need to draw the line right now. You need to set the boundary right now. You need to put a stop to whatever this thing that is getting out of hand um, before it gets bigger. So I think this is a helpful message, Carnier and Goop. The snake and the scythe has to do with releasing, cutting, setting a healthy boundary, moving on from a negative situation. And that's another way we can read the line. You see, when we see the scythe with the house, you could really be changing home base. You could be releasing yourself from where you currently are. You could be making a deep change to where you live, where you work, or that group you're part of, something that has to do with your home base business. And the thing about the snake in this context is that there could be a situation that is not good like we saw with the mouse and bear. It could be a certain person who is someone you cannot trust, you know, who is, is causing things to be negative. And I really feel that with the scythe, you need to release that. Now, the bird, house, and man brings into the picture a person. So this could be about a relationship. Now, the man can refer to your father, it can refer to any other man in your life. Really, it is, it is totally flexible in that sense, and it's going to depend on your specifics. But the man is usually someone significant, like both the man and the woman in Lenormand is something significant, someone significant. So with the bird here, there could be some tensions, there could be an argument, there could be some anxiety around the relationship with them, they could be causing you to feel uneasy. And at this point, you could be wanting to draw the line. So what is the key message for you so far from these cards? Well, that it is the right time to take an action. So if you feel that it's time to draw the line, then the cards are telling you, you are right, draw the line. Draw the line now. This is what you need to know now. This is what you need to do now. If you're looking at deep changes, you need to do them now. The snake can tell you to sort of take some easy steps or to do, go about it gradually, but really with the scythe, it's a bit more decisive than that. So the way this can play out in life is that the decision needs to be sharp and the way you implement the decision can be you know, more gradual. In all cases, it needs to make sense for you. Of course, never do something when you're not ready to do it. Never um, put yourself in an adverse situation. You don't have to make changes that just for the sake of making changes. It is the right thing to do, but also make sure that you are heading into something secure as well. And so make the changes, but make sure you have the next step ready. Okay, so that is a key message coming through the cards. It is time for change. It is time to make the boundaries. It's very important that you put a stop to this energy drain. I really think that, you know, with the mouse, bird, snake, and then the combination with the bear that makes these things a little bit heavier, um, I really think it's important that you act and draw the line. I think you could be getting stressed from this, it could be draining you, it could be eating away at something, and I really think you need to put a stop at it now. The interesting thing about the bird, house, and man is that there could be an important conversation that happens. And even though there's a lot of stress around this, possibly a lot of stress around this, I do suggest that it's time to have this conversation. I don't think you should back away from having the conversation. Say what you need to say and then move on. So on this note, let's draw the diamonds. We've got the bear, bird, snake, and man. Obviously, this is a bit of a challenging situation with this man. The bear and man can point to someone important in your life. Like we said, it can point to a parent. It can be a boss. You know, it can be someone who has some kind of influence in your life. The bird and snake is challenging. It has to do with a conversation. Um, I'm not so sure you're able to resolve differences or come onto the same page, okay? 
I think it's time to bring things out, to agree that we're going to disagree, and then you're going to move on as we saw in the central line. So prepare for that. I also want to say that the bird and snake suggest that you don't try to overdo the point, okay? So you can say what you need to say, but as they say, don't beat a dead horse, okay? You don't have to prove yourself too much. You don't have to, um, you know, overdo your points. You can sort of just, um, you know, make your point and then move on. It might land on the right ears, it might not, okay? So just prepare for that. And then we've got the mouse, bird, uh, scythe, and man. And again, I do think there is a disagreement here, and I think you feel that you cannot agree, so you're gonna agree to disagree, and then you move on. We see the scythe on the right-hand side of your, um, of your augmented line. So it can be like the outcome or the future most part of the story. So we do see that you need to move on and that I don't think this is really workable. I think it has to do with this relationship, but it can also do with the situation um, in, in the house, whatever the house specifically means for you. Like we said, it can be work or home context. And so there is this situation with this man and I feel that it needs to go in a different direction because I don't think you're on the same page. So mouse, uh, and bird is a bit like bird and snake, you know, it's not really working out. And then the scythe on top of that has to do with the separation. So I do think that it's possible that you fall out of communication with someone. So I want you to put yourself in the mindset, Carnelian group, not so much that this is going to happen, okay? It's not, you know, be careful with your affirmations. That's not what I'm saying. But if there is a situation that is not falling into place, the message here that you need to know, the most important key, is that don't try to force it to fall into place because it might not, okay? So I don't want you to set yourself up for disappointment. I don't want you to feel like you're uh, trying to make something work and it's not working and then you feel bad about it. Don't. It could be the right time to move away from this. You do your part, you say what you need to say, but you can't, you, you can't overdo and there's no need to overdo. And then you're able to move on, you're able to release yourself from this and it could be really relieving, you know? So overall, Carnelian group, what I'm seeing here is that it is a time for a deeper change. Something is not fitting. Something is not working in this context with this person or somehow this person is implicated. And I want you to be aware that this is the time to draw the line because beyond this, it could go a little bit out of control. When it's not, it doesn't have to, okay? Draw the line now. Do what you can to become aware of the fact that something is not working. So try to become more discerning about the situation. Um, try to be more discerning about what is not fitting and what could be uh, growing out of proportion at this point and draw the line and move on. Say what you need to say and then move on. I want you to trust yourself in your inner wisdom. I want you to tune in to what works for you, to what doesn't work for you. And then, you know, have that conversation, make your point and move on and release yourself from this energy. You've got what it takes to do this. You certainly have strong foundations and a lot of decisiveness. So take advantage of this to keep things in check and move on where you need to. So Carnelian Group, this is a bit of a challenging set of cards, but as always, Le Normand is about practical advice and being anchored in life so that you can actually act on things. It's not just about predicting the future upfront. Uh, when you, you know, you're in the driver's seat and you have uh, a lot of wisdom and an inner sense of guidance. So these cards sort of inspire you to align with that and to take inspired action and enlightened action for yourself. So please let me know how this is playing out for you, Carnelian Group. I am really looking forward to your thoughts and comments. And until we meet again, thank you so much for tuning in and take very good care of yourself. Welcome Leopard Skin Group. Here we are with your reading. We've got your stone next to us here and I've got my deck shuffled as always. For your reading Leopard Skin Group, we are going to do an augmented line of five and I'm just shuffling a little bit to seal our intention. Remember that we are looking at what you need to know right now. So let's deal out these cards. It's my preferred way of running an augmented line of five and see what you get. Ooh, look at that. All right, some interesting cards, Leopard Skin Group. We've got the whip right in the middle. Obviously, that's a challenging card, actually the most challenging card of the deck, and we have the mouse. What's interesting is that we have the clover, 
the tree, the heart, and the flowers. These are very powerfully positive cards. Um, the heart can be prone to negative influence, but when we see it on the other side of the heart, uh, on the other side of the tree, sorry, and especially that it's on the right hand side of your augmented line is actually pretty reassuring. We have the dog, which can point to a friendship. And so the, the thing that stands out immediately is the idea of an argument with someone. But I think because of the rest of the cards, we are looking at uh, reconciliation and being able to resolve differences. So this is pretty nice to see. Let us start weaving the cards together and then bring this augmented line into one picture. So the clover dog and whip. Very obvious that the dog and whip points to an argument with someone, a disagreement with someone. It can also point to a challenging situation with someone that is not necessarily about a personal differences. It can be that this person has a challenge, has an issue, and you need to focus on that. This said, the, the more common way to interpret the cards is differences coming up. So with the clover, we have from the outset the idea that this issue here is not as bad as you may think it is. And the tree and heart confirms this. So this is a really powerful message. And this is what you need to know right now, leopard skin group. This is really key, is you want to step back and have a bit of a broader perspective on this issue because it might not be as bad as you think it is. I do think that it's very possible to resolve the differences with this person. The flowers, whip, and mouse contributes to this indication. The whip and mouse is again this challenge, differences. Um, the mouse can suggest that this has to do with trust or with um, uh, you know, things going on behind the scenes. It can be about gossip or you know, things that were said that shouldn't have been said. But the flowers is actually the card of forgiveness. And even though the whip is strong and you may not really recover the situation as, as though nothing happened, it's still really powerful along with the other cards to support the idea that you can resolve this, that you can sort of go back to um, a positive space with this person and in this relationship. When we look at the dog, flowers, tree, and mouse, it's also pretty positive. Um, the mouse and dog again points to this idea of trust issues, but with the flowers and tree, we see this idea of resolving the differences or forgiving and understanding the, the other person better and the other person understanding you better. The tree can suggest the idea of allowing for some time to get resolved, okay? So if right now or in the immediate future, it doesn't seem like this can be resolved, the cards certainly invite you to be a little bit more patient, to allow for this to, um, you know, to sort of cool off and to take a bit of time so that it unfolds into a more positive aspect. Okay, so this is a key message from the cards. And then we've got the clover, flowers, heart, and mouse. The mouse and heart is a bit like the mouse and dog. There is that sense of disappointment or a bit of a heartache uh, from this whole situation. But the clover and flowers is an all around positive combination. And I really, really feel that healing and forgiveness are possible. Even if you don't recover the relationship to this, to as though nothing happened like it was before this issue, I think you can recover it to a great extent. It's maybe just a matter of time. The tree is wise and patient. So give it some time, you know, for the situation to cool off and to heal. And also for the, you know, that forgiveness and that space of heart, you know, to come through, to come out into the relationship. So this is what I want you to know, Leopard Skin Group. And I really like that the cards are so straightforward. It's a pretty straightforward reading. Uh, the combinations come together in a very easy way to interpret. And so I was saying, Leopard Group, what I really want you to know is um, this challenge, argument, quarrel, situation with the person can be resolved if you want it to be resolved. Of course, you are a free person, you are a free being, it's up to you. But what I'm seeing through the cards for you is that if you want a resolution, it is within reach. Um, you can reach a space of forgiveness and moving on. You can get along again with the person if that's what you want, of course. The only key for this is to be willing to see the possibility, to see the positivity, and also to allow it uh, naturally. You know, things take a bit of time in life, you know, 
Uh, we do live in physical, and so in physical there needs to be a time for unfolding, you know, and so allow for that, and you, you'll see that you can come back to a space of hardness and positivity with this person. So let me know what you make of these cards, Leopard Skin. Like I said, it's a very straightforward reading. I see the cards coming together in a very clear uh, way, and I feel the message is really clear. Let me know if you have other thoughts about the cards. I certainly would love to learn about your thoughts about these cards for you. Leave me your comments. I am really looking forward to reading them. So until we meet again, Leopard Skin Group, let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello, Cat's Eye Group. Welcome to your reading. I've got my deck, it is shuffled, and we've got your lovely stone here nearby. And for your reading, Cat's Eye Group, I want to do a simple six card reading. Of course, my deck is shuffled, and I'm just gonna shuffle a little bit more to seal the intention. Just a reminder, we are looking at what is this thing that you need to know about right now. So I'd like to deal out the cards. Let's do this right now. Okay, okay, Cat's Eye Group. I like these cards. I like what I'm seeing. Something came to mind when I was dealing the cards and just when I dealt these first two, I start from left to right. When I saw the clouds and the scythe, I immediately got the intuition that this is a thought pattern, some kind of psychological pattern or a thought pattern that I think needs to be broken for you, Cat's Eye Group. You need to snap out of a certain way of thinking, a certain thought pattern, maybe a, a certain space in your mind or in your spirit that could be keeping you stuck. What I really like about the scythe is that it is a freeing card. It can be a challenging card, but it is also a freeing card. And when we see it with something like the clouds, it has to do with the idea of releasing yourself from hesitation. So no longer hesitating. Um, the suggestion to be more decisive, to really see through your thoughts, see through the confusion. I really like the fact that it is on the left hand side of your six card reading because the progression in time tends to be from left to right. It's not always the case, but I tend to, to read it this way. Now, since we're reading the columns, let's continue with them. We've got the bird and sun. This is a lovely combination. It has to do with nice things that are said, positive conversations. It can also mean positivity in a broad sense. And what's interesting is that the bird is often associated with anxiety, um, you know, being in a space where things are uncertain and being nervous about them. And so this really completes what we're seeing um, in the clouds and in this column here. But when we've got the sun with the bird, then it is um, the idea that you move away from the situation, that the light finally comes after a long night, you know, this long night of uncertainty. So we can look forward to some healing and also I would say insight. So after this situation here where the clouds are sort of cloudy, confusing, you have some kind of breakthrough and it's gonna come through the bottom line and it, does, it releases you from this phase of darkness if you wanna put it that way. In the right hand side column, we have the garden and snake. This is interesting, especially in view of how positive the central column is. The snake in garden is a snake in the grass. It is very literally that. So there could be some kind of trap or some kind of surprise that is waiting to catch you. However, because of the bird and sun, I really feel that you know that it's coming. You know, so we see that first there is this confusion, this challenge here that you're able to break through. You see the light and I think you are able to prevent whatever thing is waiting to, to pounce or bite, uh, you know, from the metaphor with the snake. So this is really great news. I also want to take these cards as a suggestion for you. So it's really important for you to know that you can find out ahead of time that there could be some kind of surprise coming here. The snake tends to be negative. I think it's gonna be challenging, but because of the bird and sun, especially after this one here, I think you have the foresight to predict and prevent a situation that could come as a surprise. Another thing that comes through the snake and garden is someone's intentions. 
uh, envious people, um, you know, people who don't have your best interest at heart, people with, uh, you know, envy. I think envy is the, the key thing that comes with the snake. And it's possible, cat's eye group, that the bird and sun means that you succeed at something. You know, the sun is all around victory and success. You know, you do really well, you have broad success, um, possibly in the context of the public at large, as we, we will see here. And so it's possible that people around you are envious. So I want you to know that. What does that do? Well, it puts things into perspective for you. So when you have these funny behaviors that come from people, you know, you don't have to be upset. You can maybe even have compassion that some people maybe didn't achieve as well as you did. You know, they envy your good. Um, some people are outright mean about this, but some people just feel like they wish they could do this. So, you know, I leave it up to you how you want to deal with this, but I usually handle, I like to handle most uh, kinds of jealousy with compassion because I feel that people, you know, they have that, how do I say, possibly a poverty consciousness that they can't have what you have, but it's not true, right? We can all have what we say we want if we work towards them and work on our ability to receive them. So that's another possibility coming through the garden and snake. Let's circle back to the, uh, to the rose here. The clouds, bird and garden. I think that this could be a bit of a challenging situation. Uh, the clouds and garden can point to um, difficult conversations. With the garden, it has to do with a group of people. So there could be some debates or conversations. And there could be a bit of tension here between the people, between the team, maybe if it's on the job or in some other group of people. So that is the context where this could be happening. And uh, I would also say from this, and we're going to see this clearly again from the garden and snake, that, you know, in, in view of this tension here in this situation, you don't need to vocalize everything you have in mind, okay? The snake is a card of silence. So if you feel that something is off, just, you know, just observe and don't get too involved. And in the bottom line, we have the scythe, sun, and snake. I do feel that this is a lot of success because of the sun in the middle. You could make a breakthrough. Um, you could succeed at something when you didn't expect you would be able to. And then seeing the sun on the other side of this suggests that you have quite a bit of wisdom coming through this, but also the idea that you know, you don't want to be too loud about your success. Like I said, there could be some envious people. So maybe this is a suggestion to be humble, um, you know, and to sort of keep it to yourself and maybe just share it with the folks who really care about your success. Just putting this out there because this can be an envious group of people. But you have plenty of wisdom and you're going to have the foresight to see that, like we said. The clouds, sun, and garden. This is a lovely combination. When we see the sun after the clouds, it suggests that whatever situation of confusion, cloudedness, you're able to overcome it. You know, you see the light, it's um, the silver lining and all of that good stuff. And with the garden, it has to do with this community or this group of people. So I do think that despite some challenges you see through, you know, and you're able to uh, position yourself in a good place despite the challenges, despite the envious people, you know. And like I said, the sun and garden can mean public success. So you have recognition, people appreciate what you do, and this could lead to some envy. Now, the scythe, bird, and snake is quite a challenging combination cat's eye group. It has to do with a conversation, obviously because of the bird, and with the scythe, it can mean something hurtful, um, so maybe someone is going to try to have a go at you, cat's eye uh, group. It's possible that someone is trying to say nasty things to you. But the snake, I think, empowers you because it puts you in a position to move away. And I really feel that, you know, whatever something, whatever thing is thrown at you, I really don't think you catch it. You know, uh, like I said, in the central column, you have this insight um, that empowers you. And I think that that enables you to not catch the ball. You know, someone throws a fireball at you, you don't catch it and you get burned. You just don't catch it at all, you know? And so it drops off and it doesn't even touch you. I really feel that you're in this kind of uh, position of power. 
At the same time, uh, we are seeing that it's not a good idea to lock horns. So this could be something of a toxic environment and in view of your success and your insight, you are going to be able to handle it. So this is quite an interesting set of cards, lots of good dynamics. And you can see it's another one of those Lenormand readings where despite the challenging cards, you know, you come out with constructive insight. You know, at least that's my way of interpreting the cards because I like it when Lenormand helps us navigate situations in a, in a smart way or else what's the point, right? So to summarize Cat's Eye Group, I think you need to break out of a certain pattern. I think you will and you will see the light. So a lot of insight, a lot of knowledge and wisdom coming through. And this puts you in a position of power. And it also gives you the foresight and the wisdom to predict, to foresee um, some possible toxic behavior or some envious people around you. And it helps you navigate them really, really uh, well and in an intelligent way. So the key takeaway for you is that you need to know that there is perhaps a, a mental thought pattern here or some kind of pattern that you need to break out of. So do make an effort to go within and find out what that could be. And then another piece of wisdom is to keep a low profile, keep some things under your hat and to have good judgment about the kinds of people you could be dealing with here. Okay. Let me know what you make of these ideas. I'm really looking forward to your thoughts. I hope you find um, my approach constructive and supportive. Leave me your comments. I'm really looking forward to them. And before I let you go, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and I'm looking forward to our next reading together. Welcome Lapis group. Here we are with your reading. I've got my deck. As always, it is shuffled. I like to just shuffle a little bit more to seal the intention. Remember Lapis that we are looking at what you need to know right now. So what is that insight, that piece of information, or perhaps an action that you need to know about right now to help you forward. For you right now, Lapis, I want to draw a line, uh, a line of seven. Yes, just a single line of seven. And I like to fan the deck and draw the cards for this one. All right, Lapis group. These are some pretty cards to see. I'm really seeing the theme of work and money coming through these cards. We've got the lily, the fish right in the middle, and the fox. These three cards are related to work and money and income. So with three cards focusing on a specific theme, I think it would be really salient for you right now. The fish in the middle of the line is all about money and income, uh, possibly the sense of prosperity, uh, big goals, the idea of financial independence and, you know, things related to that. So we really see that this is important for you right now. There's lots of good stuff coming here. I really like the flowers. It's an all around success card. And on this side, they're pretty neutral. Yes, the fox is a challenging card sometimes, especially when it comes to relationships. But I really think that in terms of work, it's supportive and this can take on a slightly different indication. The snake is a challenging card usually but it's the first card of the line and so you unfold away from it. It can also give you some advantages. So let's weave these cards together and see what comes out for you. The snake, like I just said, is a little bit challenging, but it's also really smart with being self-interested. Uh, it's focused on the goals. Um, you know what you want and it's certainly an advice to you to focus on your own goals. The lily is the card of life path, life path and career. And so with the snake, it really encourages you to think a little bit long term. And also it tells you to focus on your best interest and to pay attention to what's going on with your life path and your career. Um, I also think there is some sense of wisdom here. So you want to try to get a sense of the bigger picture, the long term, you know, what you're becoming. It will help you to mature and to deepen your path and to really get a better sense of your priorities and what you're after. The flowers is a lovely card of success, healing and renewal. Um, it's all around joy, really. It has to do with abundance as well. And so when you see it with the fish, it's really good for money. So it's possible that there is some kind of renewal that happens for you. Uh, maybe you'd been struggling with work, your career, your direction, and then we see this uh, pair of cards here and it brings us uh, that sense of renewal, a sense of hopefulness, maybe a renewed sense of enthusiasm towards your goals, uh, which I think are really related to work and career and money. 
and the fish like we said is all around prosperity with the fox we are looking at a really good paying job um, a new source of income um, some kind of you know income that comes to you in one way or other uh, what's interesting is that the flowers is also a card of creativity so you might be looking at doing something with your talents with your abilities maybe finding a new source of income that's all exciting and that's possible for you and then we've got the dog and road. Now, in the context of work, the dog has to do with um, being employed. It's usually associated with the more junior type of employment and positions. And with the fox, we could be looking at employment. And with the road here, you could be moving forward in um, a new direction. So overall, it's really focused on work, career and money. It could be on your business, on your creativity, maybe finding new sources of income. But the idea is that you really need to know that you have the talent and the ability to do this. You do have the ability to attract more income to yourself, to put your talents to good use, to attract a new project or a new job if that's what you're after. And once you get it, you know, keep at it, go in that direction, explore it. So I really feel that at this time, you really need to be aware of your sense of prosperity, your abilities to attract income into your life, your sense of creativity and your sense of life path and how it all comes together so that also not just the money but also that sense of fulfillment because the flowers is about that sense of joy and the fish can be associated with dreams and the bigger goals that you have for yourself so what you need to know right now La Peace Group is that your goals your prosperity your income are really important at this time you want to focus on them you want to be creative you want to find ways to attract more income you want to be open to this income and when something comes your way I would say take it up of course you have to check in with yourself to make sure that it aligns but once you've done that it looks like you're going to move down that path so it's really nice to see that you're in for more prosperity for a job or a project or an interesting collaboration possibly maybe the dog refers to someone you're going to work with and so it is a good time to explore this and to see what could come out of it mainly from a material and income and prosperity perspective but also from a creative point of view now, just a note, Lapis Group, the fox and dog, the fox when it comes to relationships, um, so this is about relationships because the dog is about friendships, the fox can be a bit tricky, right? It tends to be someone who is not transparent, who is half-hearted, who's a bit tricky. So I think you could be dealing with someone who is not 100% there, but I do think that because the road is on the right-hand side of your line, you want to give it a chance and see how it unfolds. You want to see what you can get out of it. Though I really don't think that this is the main interpretation of the fox in this line. I'm just putting it out there because it is a possibility. In general, you want to be disciplined and focused and be a little bit persistent with this path as you learn about it because I do think it can deliver on some rewards uh, for you financially, creatively, uh, possibly for your long-term pathway. I think it can be really rewarding. I would say because of the snake and lily at the outset, you want to maintain the idea of your long-term good. So when you're assessing your options for creative outlets, for ways of making income, making money, taking up jobs and projects, you want to check in with how it affects your longer term path and your bigger goals. And also make sure that it advantages you financially. Okay, don't shortchange yourself or um, you know, prevent yourself from making uh, less money than what you can or what you're deserving of. You know, be open to this abundance because it is there for you. I really want you to know that. I also really want you to know that you've got the talents and the abilities, you've got the vision, and you need to put in the discipline, okay? It's gonna take possibly a while because we see the road on this side, but even then, you know, keep at it. Once you've made the decision that this is right for you, keep at it so that you see the fruits of your labor. So really, you've got plenty of positive, uh, prosperous energies coming your way. I really want you to be aware of them, to appreciate them, and to take advantage of them so that you can further your path in this way. So these are some lovely cards, Lapis Group. Uh, pretty uh, material and uh, related to things you actually do, but I still think that they have that spiritual element because they pour into your sense of prosperity and fulfillment. So let me know how you like these cards, Lapis Group. Leave me your thoughts and comments. I'm really looking forward to reading them. And until we meet again, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in and take very good care of yourself. Mm -hmm.